This video is about my quick and simple watering routine for my orchids and my other houseplants. In fact, I'll go through almost every single plant I have, apart from a handful that I'm thinking about giving away anyway. It's especially for orchid lovers like me that seek to simplify their growing habits. But it might also spark the interest of houseplant lovers that might think orchids aren't easy to obtain. You'll see on my windowsill orchids and houseplants are treated very much the same. Before I'll explain everything there is to know about my watering routine and the cause of the video, like frequency and fertilizer and so on, let's get the watering going first. Here we are in one of my current favorite spots of the living room. It contains a few recent acquisitions of mine, a couple of houseplants. Houseplants, that's a revived old passion of mine. I don't want to make a video about a routine that is not an actual routine though, because it has only been applied for a couple of months. So let's get the new plants out of the way first, before we go to the orchids and some other houseplants that have been there for many years. So here I'm checking on the medium, it's quite dry already, but this plant isn't too sensitive anyway. Its leaves are quite soft and bendy already. And this is the first orchid of the video, Cilogeny Yusitana, and as you can see the pseudobulbs are quite shriveled and the pot is very light. It's in active growth mode right now and is going to appreciate a good watering. I don't check on the Cilogeny and the Epipremnum before every watering though, because they've basically never said no to water. I think that's because they transpire a lot of water through their large leaf surface. It's a bit different with the Seropegia though. This pot does have a slight fungus net problem and I'm trying to keep them at bay with watering carefully, although the fungus nets seem not to be bothered by dryness either, so I'm thinking about getting some Pinguiculus on its side. And further down there are two Peperomias that I got only a couple of months ago and I'm still holding my breath. I've lost a Peperomia pepper spot due to a mad infection and every time I see a black tip on the pepper spot I think it might be the beginning of the end again. It is very dry at this stage, it has quite small of a tray, actually too small. I spill water every time I water it basically. This pot dries out very fast and I watered it again one week later. It could use a larger pot, but I'm not brave enough doing anything besides waiting, seeing and watering carefully. Peperomia prostrata has quite big of a pot which holds water very well, so I water it less frequently and rather carefully. Please keep your fingers crossed that it will stay this pretty and happy. I'm quite nervous about this one's well-being too. The watermelon peperomia is another one that has died on me before and that I got again about five months ago together with the epipremnum. I tend to let them all dry out in between the waterings and go and see if the leaves get wobbly with time and if they need water again. And the watermelon peperomia is rather thirsty too so it needs water most of the time. I go through these plants twice here until water appears in the trays. I don't have any particular watering day like Sunday or so, but of course I tend to water my orchids and other houseplants at the weekends. But today I'm going to water them all at once for the video and that's not how I usually do it. During a normal week I use about three cans of water if I had to guess. And today I used about nine or ten cans of water, so that's three times the amount. If I had to prepare them for a longer absence of mine or a very hot summer week, I would water rather thoroughly. If I know that I'm at home and I have time, I water more carefully. This is going to be a rather extensive watering session, thus most of the orchids won't ask for water before I would say two weeks will have passed. And the orchids in smaller pots and the houseplants are going to be the first ones that need water again. Now I have to adjust the tripod and here's the first shelf with orchids only. I used to water my orchids in small groups in decorative pots or buckets of water by letting them sit in there for a couple of minutes up to a couple of hours. It worked out very well and it's a method that I can highly recommend for everyone who enjoys watering. Watering has never been my favorite part of growing orchids though. I watered them like this for many years, but with time I became tired of watering them that way, because it was pretty time consuming and every time I watered I had orchids and water all over the place, which was quite unpleasant. The situation was kind of aggravated by my apartments being back then tiny today rather small, so I've never had all too much surface area to spread orchids and supplies over. 
and I like my surroundings being neat and tidy, but instead I had a constant mess. So as a result, I put the whole watering procedure off as long as possible and my collection was always slightly on the edge of being underwatered. At the same time, I had a bad conscience knowing they could do better if I could only bring myself to watering them more diligently. But the orchids proved to be very adaptive with their root systems acting as water reservoirs. I started taking some pride in my lazy watering routine that kept my efforts manageable. After the plants had been soaked, I put them back in their place on the windowsill where they would sit in a small puddle of water that collected under their pots. The water was sucked up or evaporated within a couple of hours. And at some point I just started leaving out the soaking pot, left them in their trays and decorative pots and watered them where they are, like any other house plant. And I did that more and more often, so letting them sit in water is what I did during vacation anyway and it worked well, so why not extend that simple way of watering to the rest of the year? And it so happens that it wasn't that big of a deal. A healthy root system enjoys a good soak even for a couple of days and suffocation of the roots has never become an issue to about 99% of my plants. That's even a pretty accurate estimation because I only have one or two particular fowls, that is, mm. whose root systems suffer or die off repeatedly and that I'm thinking about transitioning to some bare root setup. But these are exceptions. Sometimes I still underwater a particular plant or even a complete tray and sometimes I overwater a plant or a tray. But as long as I fix the issue next time I come around watering by giving it some extra water or skipping it the next time, everything is fine. It's not as perfect as fast wet and dry cycles with frequent flushing for example can be if it's done properly. But at the moment it's so much more convenient for me and I've had less underwatering issues and better overall results. If a plant is sick or has not much of a root system, it needs extra attention and more TLC, that's obvious. But what you see here is what I do for the vast majority of my plants. So to sum it up, I use the same watering method for all my plants, but I vary the frequency and the amount of water a plant gets. Over to the next shelf to some cat layers. I power water through the pot so that the roots are moistened, but I think they would be able to soak the water up without any help just from the bottom of the tray. I fill up this tray as much as I can because they empty it out in a couple of days anyway whilst filling their pseudobulbs and it's quite shallow. In winter I wouldn't let them sit in such a big puddle of water though due to the cold temperatures. I would water a bit more carefully. While filming this video, I'm getting a little more aware of the individual watering cycles. These cattleyas, for example, are still moist after one week, so they would be watered after about two weeks again, if I'm good that is, but sometimes they live from their stored water for another week and get watered after three weeks again. And in winter maybe even after four weeks. It depends on the weather and the season. It's summer now but not incredibly hot yet and still quite humid. So in very hot and dry summer weeks as we usually get it I would water about every 10 days to two weeks. And the same goes for my potted vandas down here. Other than the cattleyas, they do not have any pseudobulbs to store water, but they have fatter roots, which clearly act as their water storage. I talk more about that in my vanda watering routine videos. And I usually water vandas and cattleyas on these shelves at the same time. This is the point where I always spill some water, because there are leaves everywhere coming into my way. Let's take a quick look into the bathroom. Here's my 30 liter water barrel full of reverse osmosis water. And I know the barrel doesn't look particularly nice too, but it's still nicer than the containers of water that I used to have. The RO system as well as the barrel have been real game changers for me when it comes to keeping it manageable and convenient for me. My tap water has always been so hard that I wouldn't want to use it with my orchids long term and I tried my best to collect rainwater, which wouldn't work without a garden and a proper gutter. Thus I used to buy soft or distilled water in the grocery store, which cost a lot of money. I had to get the heavy bottles upstairs, which was a lot of work. 
and time consuming and expensive and produced a lot of plastic waste too and the bottles were taking up space and didn't look nice. I noticed that while I'm thinking back I'm getting frustrated again. So today the RO system is the way to go for me and I've never regretted buying it. It only cost me about 40 euros and it has worked without changing the filters for several years now. The fertilizer you saw in the clip before was a random fertilizer. I've used different brands in the past on and off and I have never seen any major differences. I've started to use additional Epsom salts though and Calmac later on, which seemed to help if you ask me. Then I started measuring the pH, but soon after I let it slide again, so I can't tell you much about that. I base my opinion on fertilizers pretty much on them being easy to handle. I don't appreciate crystals that don't dissolve or bottles that make a mess like the one I have right now. But there's a lot of useful information on fertilizers online, I just haven't dug in deeper yet. And as you can see, orchids can be grown without any special knowledge about fertilizers. Of course, I try not to burn the roots, but I fertilize regularly. I slightly vary the strength depending on which tray I water. Cattleyas in growth mode get more fertilizer than fowls. Again, no strict rules here and no right way to water or fertilize. Everyone has their own character and every collection their individual needs, depending on many factors. So there will never be any strict rules that you can follow to achieve a certain goal. Everyone has to learn what works best for them and their individual collection and needs. And for me, making steps to keep everything manageable was key. Because even though now many of my plants are lumped in together in trays and I don't think about every single plant individually very often, their overall growing conditions have improved though, because I'm now able to be more consistent with my watering. The two plants that I'm watering right now don't have a good root system and I tried to just moisten the sphagnum on the surface. I know that a pumping spray bottle would work much better for this purpose, but I simply don't use it, at least not very often. Let's quickly zoom in. Sorry for the bad lighting here, it's a very gloomy day. Back here, or rather in the front, directly at the window, there's a little tray of miniature vandas together with a Fal Bastianii. These are probably my most uncared for orchids just because I cannot reach them properly. They're quite resilient though and don't really need or demand much more attention. Okay, I think we are about halfway through and the video is already quite long. So I've decided to make a second part in which I'm going to show you the rest of my plants, especially a recovering tray and a little humidity box and some different genera of orchids, especially the vandas and the northern window sills, which I haven't shown you yet. Also my Monstera Deliciosa and a couple more house plants. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions regarding my watering or any tips for me, I would really appreciate if you left a comment in the comment section below. Happy growing to all of you. Bye bye. Oh and please don't forget to subscribe, like the video and check out our iPhone application. Link in the description box. Bye.